So today we're in a 2014 BMW X3. This is the xDrive 28i. So in this one we have BMW's two liter four cylinder, which BMW says makes 240 horsepower and 260 pounds feet of torque. Now BMW is either lying about that or that's horsepower to the wheels because this car feels much faster than that. Yeah, zero to 60 time, 6.7 seconds, which again, leads me to believe it's gonna be making a little more than 240 horsepower because it feels like a damn sight more. So in this you get BMW's eight speed automatic, which behaves pretty well. It can actually skip gears to downshift and when you leave it in sport, it's fine, it holds gears well. It's not gonna upshift too soon. So off the top, I will say, I don't really understand the point of a small SUV personally. I'd rather just have a wagon. I think it makes more sense. What do you get with this that you don't get from a wagon? Well, ground clearance and a higher roof line. Are you taking this off-road? No, you're not. But here in the States, the free market dictates, we get these, not wagons. I'll try to ignore that for the duration of this review. I'll try. So first of all, the uh, driving position is really easy to get dialed in, like most BMWs. The gauge cluster is traditionally analog, very easy to read. You have a speedometer, tachometer, fuel gauge, and water temperature. Now being a BMW, this car is available with an M Sport package. This car is not equipped with it. If you do get the M Sport, you're going to get 19 inch wheels, shift paddles if you get the twin turbo six cylinder. What the f might you be doing? Stopping. Stopping for a squirrel. Welcome to Oregon. What was I saying? M Sport package. You get 19 inch alloys with that. Shift paddles on the steering wheel if you opt for the twin turbo six cylinder. You get a Sport Plus driving mode. Adaptive steering and adaptive suspension. Now, is that a worth it option to get on this car? I don't know. Because if you're buying this car, I don't think you have sporting in mind. And all that's gonna do is make the car less comfortable most of the time. Now, in my opinion, it's hard to make a crossover look good. They just don't look right to me because they're not quite an SUV, they're not quite a car, they're not quite a wagon. So you end up in this weird gray area where it can't really be aggressive but they still try to look aggressive, but you end up with this kind of weird mush. However, this car is not offensive. It's not ugly. It's just not something you want to sit on your porch, sip your coffee and stare at and be like, yeah, I own that. Now this car is electric power steering and it's a little tiny bit dead on center, which is a little forgivable because it's an SUV. But once you're off center, turns in quick. When the car's loaded up, it's very predictable. The steering does talk to you. It's not as telepathic as BMW used to be. But we might as well get used to it, right? Because this is what we're all moving to. So this car is based on the 3 Series platform. And it feels like driving, so far, a tall 3 Series. No surprise there. You have plenty of space up front. The visibility is excellent. The side mirrors on this car are actually kind of massive, but makes for a very low stress thing to drive. Right off the bat for an SUV, the chassis feels tight. It, I don't feel any flex going over bumps, no creaks. I mean, it's a BMW. If you were to get right out of a, say, GLK 350 and into this, it makes this almost feel like a sports car. I think the GLK Mercedes feels a little floppy. And the Audi Q5 just feels like a Volkswagen. This is still an all-wheel drive car, but it still feels like a BMW. So you get the rear bias and the good weight balance. If you're a driver and find yourself forced to buy one of these small crossover German SUVs, this is probably the one you're gonna want. 
you have three driving modes. You have normal, eco, pro, and sport. Now the driving modes in this car pretty much change the throttle response and the way the engine delivers power. You also have a sport mode for the transmission, which you engage by slapping the stick to the left, and you can manually control your shifts. And luckily it's the right way in this car. What I mean by that is pull back to upshift and push forward to downshift. And that's the way it's supposed to be. If you think it should be the other way around, that's not just your opinion, you're wrong. Welcome to Oregon, where if the weather doesn't make you suicidal, the drivers will. So the handling here is typical BMW. The car has a nice rotational feeling. And it's very confidence inspiring, especially with the all wheel drive in lovely weather like this. The car has a lot of grip. It does come with run flat tires and I think that adds to a little more NVH while driving it. So I would opt for no run flats if you could. Now the size of the car is good. Um, you have room for five adults pretty comfortably. Of course you'd have more space for five adults if you had an X5 which is the one you should get if you want an SUV. Devin, you said you weren't gonna do that. That's all right, I'll cut that part out. So while this does have the same engine as the 3 Series, the 328i that is, you don't get the fake noise coming into the cabin through the speakers. And a lot of people don't like that feature, but when you hear what this engine sounds like without it, you almost prefer it. Um, it's not a very inspiring noise. It doesn't sound like it really wants to rev. It's got a little bit of a vacuum cleaner noise. Not the biggest fan of that. Vacuuming. I will say BMW has done a good job of masking the fact this car is turbocharged because you get a lot of power low down, but it doesn't flatten out. It revs all the way to seven and it makes power all the way to seven. You really would never know it's turbocharged. Now available options in something like this are panoramic roof, which is quite nice. It brings a lot of light into the cabin. It doesn't make it feel so much like a cave. You can get a heated steering wheel, which will singe your fingerprints off. I really can't use it for more than 30 seconds. Heated seats, obviously, backup camera, parking sensors. This car's party trick is the fact that it's kind of a hoot to drive when the road gets twisty. And should you find yourself a petrol-headed father being pressured by the wife to get rid of your 3 Series and get something that's an SUV because she's not gonna want a wagon if she's American, don't fear because you will still be able to have plenty of fun in this. Turn in, look at that. Two hundred and forty horsepower, my ass BMW. So this little SUV has the most important thing a car can have for me, which is it's dynamically correct. What I mean by that is it responds to your inputs as a driver the way a sports car should. And that's so important because that means it's predictable. That means it'll inspire confidence to drive. And that means you're going to enjoy it. The man over there leaf blowing some water around. It's a good use of uh, resources there. The cool thing about this car is you can be a dad and not throw in the towel and give up. You can still look forward to that good road on your way home. So let's try to come do something that resembles a conclusion. If you find yourself in the market for a small crossover, then my condolences if you do, this is probably going to be the one you're going to want to buy if you're watching this channel. I think that about sums it up. All right, guys. As always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.
Now, I'm not sure where my position in life is supposed to be, but I do know it's always behind a Prius. 